morning, friends. Welcome to the Riverland Central Church this morning. I just want you to know we're praying and thinking of you at this time. We're not going through an easy time, a lot of us, with this virus, are we? But, you know, I want you to dwell on the words of Paul, what he said. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, he said, In all things give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. How much more should we give thanks, considering all that he went through with his beatings and imprisonment and so on, and how much more other countries suffering? We live in the lucky country of Australia. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all you've done for us. I want you to get ready for communion this morning. I want you to get your cup ready with your grape juice, your wine, or whatever represents the, the blood of Jesus for you. And get the bread or the, or the um, biscuit ready that represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. Now let's get ready now, and together let's praise and worship the Lord. on us as deep cries out to thee oh how desperately he wants us the things of earth stand next to him like a candle to the sun To his great love Behold his holy son The lion and the lamb given to us The word became a man that my soul should know a Savior. Forsaken for the sake of all mankind, salvation is in His blood. Jesus Messiah, the right just I for love It wasn't over For He is the reason why Let seeds my soul
And your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. where David and Goliath battle it out. So, this is David. He's the son of Jesse, the youngest son at that. And all his brothers were at a war fighting the Philistines. They won Israelites' team. He was too young to go to the war, and he stayed home 
with all the sheep and cattle and protected them. Now, he was sent on an errand to go to his brothers at the wharf. Here, you might say, is where the Israelites are. And here is where the Philistines are. Now, this boy here, his name is David, he went to the camp and he heard lots of people talking about a man named Goliath. Goliath was a very tall man. He wore lots of heavy armour and he was over nine feet tall. This is Goliath. He's so much taller than a regular figure. So, David went to the camp and he said that he would fight Goliath because he had God on his side. Everyone was in awed because he was so little and he was going to fight Goliath. They also thought that he wouldn't be able to do it. But King Saul, here's our King Saul, he was the leader of the Israelites and he went to King Saul to say that he was going to fight them. Now King Saul said that you should put on my armour, so this isn't what you do to a usual person, but how Lego figures put on armour and he put on Saul's armour but he said he's not used to the armour and it's different so he couldn't use it like that so he said no I'm not going to use your armour he gave it back to Saul got to put his head back on because as we know Lego figures head pops up I'm glad that humans don't know so he went to a stream. Well, before he did that, he told everyone that he fights bears barehanded when he's protecting the sheep. And so the bears aren't alive anymore. Anyway, he went to a stream and got himself five smooth stones. So you can see we've got one stone. I didn't bother making five, but there he was. And he went up to Goliath, who kept saying that he could beat anybody of the, Philist of the Israelites. And you can see he is very, very tall when he doesn't have his gun. Oh, that's not good. This is Goliath. And he kept saying that he could defy any man in the Israelite army, that nobody would be able to beat him. But he did say if he did beat them, they would become their slaves. And if he didn't beat them, their team, his team would become their slaves. So David went up to Goliath and he said, I will fight you. And Goliath said, do you think I'm a dog that you would come at me with sticks and stones? But David said, I am of the Lord Most High's army. He wound his sling round and round, I just have a rock in his hand, and he threw it and it hit Goliath right in the noggin. And then Goliath fell over and he came up and he got Goliath's sword, but in this case his gun, and went and chopped his head off. And yeah, into lots of parts. And then all these guys, they ran away. And then after seeing what David had done, these guys chased after him. As you can see, we don't need to fear big problems like Goliath or the coronavirus. As long as we have God in us, we can have courage through him like David did. If you're feeling scared or lost this week, remember to think of God and have courage. Maybe you could build yourself a Bible story out of Lego or David and Goliath even. That's all from this kids segment. See ya! center where the packets are processed, packed, and then it is dispatched. Uh, the whole process is done by us.
we have already gone to uh, distribute about 1000 pack food packages to needy people uh, who are basically migrant laborers who don't have any identification and we have been working with the government officials in identifying these people and providing them their basic food uh, needs as of day uh, so about 1000 have gone through and the demand is increasing per day and one of our schools has now become the control center for the state ambulance services and it has begun functioning from 1 a.m. This, uh, this morning and uh, now the packaging for the next uh, supply is in full swing. Uh, there are people waiting anxiously, uh, looking forward to what we can do. The conditions in the slum is so bad because many people don't have ration cards by which the government can supply them uh, provisions. Uh, so we, uh, with the help of the police and the uh, state administration, we identified those who did not have ration cards uh, and uh, we made sure that uh, uh, supplies reached them. The other uh, group that is very badly affected is the migrant laborers who basically work in the construction sites. They are not able to come out of their houses even to go and buy the basic needs because the clampdown is very strict in this country. And the policemen are just deployed all over the place with very little protective gear and equipment, with anything at all. They are just deployed. And they are doing a wonderful job, but they are uh, doing it without any defense. Uh, from CFI side, we have uh, procured hand sanitizers, gloves and masks. And uh, we, we don't know how much we will be able to sustain. The people here are tired. They are uh, working overtime, day and night, uh, packaging and dispensing. Thank you for helping the least of these. With your help and support, we can save lives. Thank you for your generosity and help. Together, we can overcome this crisis. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jason. I had a verse stick out to me recently this week from 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 7. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. The one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Well, as you've just seen from the, from our clip from Empire, there's people around the world who are giving not just, not just monetarily, but they're giving their time and everything they've got. The, the folks at Empire are doing a fantastic job in South Asia. Riverland Central are proud to partner with Empire and it's through our giving that we are helping them to help others and to help develop communities. If you would like to give to Empire, you can use the details that are coming on your screen and you can write missions in the, in the description box. Or if you'd like to give your tithes and offerings as per normal, you can put tithes in your EFT transfer so we know where they're going. Alternatively, if you don't have access to EFT and you'd like to give in person, you can deliver your offering to 11 Mortimer Road in Berry Monday morning. Thank you, God bless you, and have a great day.
Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Communion. Thank you for having me at your place this morning. It's really great to be with you. I really miss being with you. Are you wearing your pajamas? Is that Ugg boots I can see? Oh, look at you, casually out for church this morning. Uh, that's really cool. I really don't mind what you wear when you watch this. I really, really don't. But you know what, there would be some people around the world who would be a little horrified to think that we were taking communion together in such a casual manner. Who would be horrified to think that we were taking it without a priest uh, praying over it and, and uh, having a designated approved person to distribute it. Maybe it was your kids who got it out and put it on the plate this morning. That would be really not on for a whole pile of people around the world. There's a risk at this time as we're churching at home, as we're participating in the services from home, that we can take a casual attitude that isn't actually ideal. The church at Corinth took a casual attitude to uh, the Lord's Supper and Paul rebuked them for it in 1 Corinthians 11. I wonder if there's something here we can learn. He says 1 Corinthians 11 verse 20, when you meet together, you're not really interested in the Lord's Supper. For some of you hurry to eat your own meal without sharing with others. As a result, some go hungry while others get drunk. What? Don't you have your own homes for eating and drinking? You see, they'd get together for a meal. It wasn't just a little tiny piece. And some would go ahead and they'd be roaring drunk and, and other, others would miss out altogether. And Paul would say, no, 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 that's not what this is about. He goes down in verse 26. It says, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. This morning, I want us to stop to stop what we're doing, to stop scrolling through your Facebook feed, to stop on your exercise bike, to, to get off um, you, you, whatever it is you're on that shouldn't maybe be right now, to stop walking if you've gone for a walk, to stop the car, pull over if you're driving listening to this. And let's take a moment to drop the casualness and give this memorial service, the memory it deserves, the, the reverence it deserves, the, the solemnity it deserves. It's a wonderful thing we're celebrating. We're celebrating Jesus' death. Now, often sharing the news that somebody's died is terrible news, but in this case, it's wonderful news because what it does for us, Jesus' death in all of its, all of its horror, all of its pain, all of its shame, bought for us forgiveness of sins bought for us the right to swap places with Jesus in terms of our righteousness so we get his righteousness and he took on our misery. And it buys for us a, a, a spot at the table in God's family. It gives us right relationship with him. So it's great news to announce what we're announcing today, announcing Jesus' death until he comes because he's coming back. He's coming back and that's great news too. But we announce his death and all that he went through all that he bought for us, all that he, he did for us in his death. He bought us a righteousness, a rightness with God, right relationship with God and entry into the family of God. And that is such a wonderful thing. So together now, we're going to take our bread, our juice, our water, whatever it is you have, but just stop. Remember Jesus. Remember that he died for you. Romans 4.25 says, He was handed over to die because of our sins. And he was raised to life to make us right with God. That's what we're celebrating today. Let's thank him. Father, we thank you for giving us Jesus, for loving us so much that you would give your son to take our place where we deserve to die for the things that we've done, when we deserve to die for, for the garbage that we've allowed into our lives. You gave us Jesus and you punished him instead of us. You punished yourself instead of us and he went through a terrible, terrible death because of his love for us and his love for you, God. So we just remember Jesus. In this moment, we stop and say, thank you, Jesus. Take the bread with me. This water symbolizes the blood of Jesus, which washes me clean. Yours, which washes you clean. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. Good morning, folks. My name's Neil, and I'm here to do the next in our um, Jesus Christ Who series. And uh, I'm going to be talking about Jesus Christ, our Saviour. But I'd like, let's, let's pray to start with. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather, even though we're apart. Lord, we thank you that for this opportunity we have and we ask that your word would go deep within us. Your word would touch us and change us and take us on into what you have for me or have for us. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. And this morning I want to start with a reading from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. And it says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness and devotion to God while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. And uh, I'm, I'm going to start my story at the beginning. Um, I'm a third child, um, and, and yes, the dreaded third child, and I have the third child or the third son syn syndrome. I'm a son of Stan and Helen Cooper, um, who had six children, four boys, then two girls. Dad was a returned Air Force veteran who, as a fitter and turner, was seconded from the Army to the Air Force during World War II. He, he, he had to maintain and repair aircraft. He served in several Australian locations, then in Borneo at Bowat Papen and other areas as, as the war went progressed towards Japan. Dad, under the soldier settler scheme, then got a farm down the southeast at Lucendale, and uh, I grew up on that farm and attended Lucendale Area School all my life. I went to the one school for the whole of my education, which is really a blessing. It really is. When I graduated at age 17, there was no position on the farm for me. So the third son syndrome kicked in again and I had to leave home. So I joined the Air Force and served for 21 and a half years all over Australia. Growing up, I attended Sunday school with my mother and the things I learned both at Sunday school and, and the things that were instilled in me by my mum and dad stead, held me in good stead during all my years of service. In saying that, I'm not painting myself as a saint. Far from it. My love of beer and spirits and partying dominated everything I did outside of work hours. All through the 70s and 80s, we worked hard and we played even harder. I, I was involved in football and cricket along with the continual and required socialising after games. This behaviour continued even after I met Elaine and I married her in, in 1977. It's a continual blessing and sense of wonder that, that Elaine put up with that type of, type of behaviour. Uh, and, and this year, we'll celebrate 43 years of marriage. Elaine could not work because of, of, of back issues. And when we moved to Melbourne in 1982, specialists finally diagnosed her with a pro prolapsed disc that had bone spurs. And so she had several laminectomies because nerves were being trapped and it was affecting her spinal cord. After several laminectomies, she ended up having a spinal fusion at, at, at L4-5 vertebrae levels in mid-1984. And as a result of all this, she ended up addicted to opioid medication. Several of my Air Force mates told me to get rid of Elaine. She was no good. But my upbringing kicked in and I got rid of my mates and stuck with Elaine. And it was the best thing I've ever done. In early 85, my sister Rosemary, who's a re uh, registered nurse, rang us and said that, that the Reverend Horry Duncan lives, lived at Hobbers Crossing, which was just up the road from where we were, and that he could probably help us. 
So she, she, so we set up a meeting. I dropped Elaine off the first time and went to the pub. The next time, um, next appointment, Horry Duncan, he was a clever fella. He was waiting outside and he told, said, no, nah, you've got to come in with us. So um, long story cut short, we ended up in his church, me with one foot in the door and one foot out, ready to go when Elaine was fixed. But God had other ideas and we both committed our lives to Jesus and the rest is history. It's his story. Elaine received help through the Uniting Church Ministry Home in St Albans and after five weeks um, of living there and, and prayer counselling, she was released. She was free of medication and she was a new girl. In all this, I wasn't looking for God, but God engineered circumstances to bring us to him. I didn't think I needed saving, but I did need a saviour. And on committing my life to Jesus, Jesus certainly met all my unknown needs. My needs were selfish. I thought I could get Elaine fixed and go, go my own, own way. That was not my need. My need was Jesus. And, and Jesus stopped me leading a selfish life. In Luke chapter 2, after we read about the birth of Jesus, and in, in Luke, 22, uh, Luke 2, 28 to 32, they presented Jesus at the temple and we read, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations and he is the glory of your people Israel. The world didn't think it needed a saviour. But God knew and sent his son Jesus to redeem humankind and open the way for man to come back into right relationship with him, our heavenly father. And in John 4, we read, read about Jesus with a woman at the well. And uh, in, at the end of that story, in verse 42, we read, Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the saviour of the world. The village of Sychar in Samaria didn't wake up and think they needed a saviour either, but Jesus proved to them that they did and they responded. Just like me, when the realisation and truth broke through on them, they surrendered their lives and accepted Jesus as their saviour. Scripture is very clear. Mankind needs a saviour and that saviour is Jesus Christ. Paul, when writing in, in Titus, as I read before, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness and devotion to, to God. What, while we look forward with hope to the wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life for us and we need to really take notice of that. If you are listening and you've never given your life to, or committed your life to Jesus, then shortly you'll have an opportunity to, do, to pray with me and commit your life to Jesus. Why? Because you will never be more ready than now. And like me and like the, village, the, the people we've just read about who didn't realise they needed a saviour, God knows best and he knows you need a saviour and that saviour is Jesus. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 13, we read, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. 
Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We need to call on the name of Jesus. So now, will you, will you call on the name of, Jesus, the name of Jesus? You won't regret it. I don't. Jesus hasn't let me down in over 35 years of following him. So let's pray. And, and pray these words after me if you've never committed your life. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are our saviour. I ask now, Lord, that you would forgive me for all my sins because I have lived a sinful life. I was born in sin and I'm living in sin and I need to be saved. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would come into my heart. I believe in you and ask that you would come in and live with me for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, then I ask, get in contact with us at Riverland Central Church and we will be able to help you in your walk with Jesus. It, I'm 35 years along the, along the line and I'm still learning. There's much to learn, so please contact us and let us know if you've made that commitment. Thank you. Amen. Hi everyone, Joella here. We're about to close this part of our meeting, but before we do, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's participated. Thanks for sharing your story with us, Neil. And if you've met Jesus this morning, if you've had some kind of encounter with him, or if you'd like to, then please get in contact with us so we can help you, we can support you as you begin your journey with Jesus. Before we finish up today, I just want to tell you something that's happening next week. Next week, of course, is Mother's Day, and we've got an opportunity for a Mother's Day celebration. It's open to everybody who's uh, related or connected to Riverland Central Church and to our neighbours in the Mortimer Road area, the North Ferry area. To be part of this celebration, what you need to do is nominate a well-loved mum who is connected with you or who lives in a North Berry. To nominate that mum, uh, text the mum's name, her home address, your name, and in 25 to 50 words, the reasons why she is so well loved, so honoured and so treasured. And send those details to 0491 707 927 by text. That number will appear on your screen shortly. And do that by next Friday, the 8th of May. And there are going to be some fabulous prize packs delivered to those, some of those mums, the ones who are selected uh, next Sunday. We're going to invite all of our neighbours in the North Berry Mortimer Road area to join us in this celebration and to do that we're going to letterbox drop them again uh, today and tomorrow so if you fancy a walk it's a beautiful day today if you fancy a walk this afternoon between two and five just for half an hour or an hour with uh, the members of your household then please give me a call Joella on you can call the church office number 85832260 or get in contact with me directly to say yes Yes, I'd love to go for a walk today or tomorrow, 2 to 5 this afternoon or any time tomorrow. And uh, I can give you the flyers and an area that you can drop those off to. So we can once again invite our neighbourhood to celebrate with us all that is good. Well, we're going to break for coffee now and uh, tea and whatever you've got at your place, really, because you'll be providing the tea and the food. Uh, so why don't you join us in one of our Zoom rooms, our Zoom gatherings this morning. If you head back to the Facebook page, all the details will be there where you can join one of the Zoom rooms and have a chat with some of the folk from church. It'll be great to see you there. Bring your kids. Uh, come and show us your Lego creations in the kids' room. But other than that, uh, come and join and have a great conversation. Bless you all. Have a wonderful week and enjoy celebrating your mum this week.